Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome us on this beautiful night. I'm here with Father Ed, Father Sonny, welcoming you to Clergy in the Courtyard. An evening of just trying to reach out, stay in touch. Um, a, a night where you can send in some questions, and after we make a few comments, we'll be open to answering those. So, welcome. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful evening. And uh, during the uh, pandemic, we are all worried and uh, tense and all. In the midst of all this, we are, we are so we got a lot of things to be grateful for. Our closeness to our family, our friends, our good health. And uh, today we celebrate the feast of St. Matthias. And uh, he was uh, replaced by Judas, and he had a beautiful vocation to this, the vocation to um, uh, to live as Jesus did. Therefore, all of us, as we are uh, in our, uh, uh, in, we are called to do the same ministry of uh, uh, doing love, compassion, kindness, and forgiveness, by which we bring peace and joy in our hearts, because uh, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Well, here we are doing things that we would never imagine that we would do. And believe me, when we have not gotten used to um, celebrating Mass in an empty pews, we miss each and every one of you and long for the day that we'll be back together again. And we, all of us hope the best for you and wish the best for you. And we're very busy trying to stay connected and reaching out and I encourage everyone to reach out. We've taken some organized uh, methods. We have our outreach program with the Five Saints Catholic Community that have organized uh, calling trees, uh, individuals from different ministries, uh, you asking them to call and touch, reach out to people. So if you're not, if you haven't been connected to that ministry, we still invite you to um, reach out to your neighbor. Call someone that you always sat next to you in church. Ask them how they're doing. It's important that we stay connected and that we reach out. And true, we um, are in this together. But let us never forget that we've been in this together from the very beginning. Before this pandemic ever started, as the body of Christ, we are one. So let us live our faith. Let us together be one. Good evening, everyone. Just as Father Sonny and Deacon Bill said, it's a, it's a beautiful evening uh, having this clergy in the courtyard. It's uh, kind of our first attempt, not only just to put a message on our website and Facebook for you, but actually to interact that you can ask us some questions this evening. I'm going to kind of concentrate on uh, just introducing the topic of when we might get back to Mass and when we do, what it's going to be like. Because um, a lot of people have that question. Um, just today we received an eight-page uh, document from the diocese. We call them protocols for how we're going to go about this. And um, just one thing the bishop keeps reminding us is just remind all of you that um, everyone is still dispensed from uh, the obligation of Sunday Mass. Um, and the elderly, especially, a lot of times you are have been so uh, motivated by the obligation of celebrating Sunday Mass, which is a great virtue. Uh, we want to take that away at all, but it is not a sin, not a mortal sin, to miss Mass in this case. So just be be mindful of that. Just want to say a word about uh, the four bishops of Iowa are basically working together on the same kind of protocols. There might be a few differences here and there, but we will not open up and return to Mass uh, as one diocese. It'll be all four at the same time. And so this is a statement from the bishop. With regard to resuming public Masses in our parishes, the Diocese of Sioux City has based and will continue to base decisions on scientific data and reliable projections. There is a number of criteria that the diocese is waiting to be met before it is deemed safe and responsible to open up churches again. 
This includes the downward trajectory of new COVID-19 cases reported within a 14-day period, the downward trend uh, trajectory of hospital bed intensive care and ventilator usage, and the downward trajectory of daily death reports. In addition to these things, it is necessary to have adequate contact tracing and a robust testing program. Achieving these conditions will indicate that it is reasonably safe to resume with precautions the public celebration of the Mass. So when people ask, when are we going to do this, the answer is still unknown. Uh, we don't know when our peak in Iowa is going to uh, start dropping, um, and then it's going to be a 14-day period. So it could be in June sometime, mid, late June, uh, no one really knows. So we just kind of have to wait and see. So with that, I don't know if there's any questions yet, but we can, um, I'll just keep talking until there's some questions. Then. Um, some people are asking about First Communion. We have scheduled them for the end of May. Uh, that's not gonna happen. We won't be back in church for sure by the end of May. So we'll try to get some notes out to parents, but the basic message is we're not gonna put anything on the schedule until we know when we reopen. And the unfortunate thing too is if cases appear after we open, we'll probably have to close down right away. Uh, so that's just the way it will. A lot of the, we're kind of working out a letter of protocols that, calls that we hope to send to every household uh, in our Five Saints Catholic communities so that everyone kind of knows how we will approach it when we reopen, all entering through one door, having a freestanding automatic sanitizer dispenser. Everyone will be need to be ushered to a seat. We will only be seating like in one pew and that'll be two pews empty and then a third pew. Um, People can, that sit together can only sit together if you live together. Uh, even if you're related to family members, and not be able to sit together. So um, that's, that's gonna be hard on a lot of people. So we have a question, Father. Uh, people are wondering, will we have to wear face masks when we come to mass? Good question, yes. That's part of the protocols too. Everyone will have to wear a face mask. And so we've had some great people volunteer to make face masks for each of our parishes and uh, Come with your own for sure, but if you don't have one, hopefully we'll have enough. There'll be cloth, and we'll use a grabber to give it to you, and from then on you can keep it. You can take it home, wash it, keep it, keep it clean. But everyone, only people that have a face mask will be allowed in church. All right, we have another question. With the state opening back up, uh, is there any possibility of the Adoration Chapel opening or a possibility for us to have a Eucharistic procession? Uh, we had a Zoom call today with the bishop and some of his staff and priest, and unfortunately that question about processions did not come up. But the adoration part is still suspended. That is in these protocols that I just received today. Um, but no deadline, no conditions really laid out uh, for that. So that's going to come, we're going to hear more about that later. But for now, at least perpetual adoration, that kind of adoration, is still suspended. I'll try to remember to ask that question about processions, because we he are hearing things that it's safer when we're outdoors. Deacon Dave Pent would like to know if he can sit in his normal pew, Father. <laughs> Probably not. Deacon Dave cannot sit in his own regular pew, unless by lottery luck he ends up there. I think I would say something about, uh, you know, we need, we're going to need more ushers than what we have. Uh, the age limit we had said last week was 60 years old and younger, or younger than 60. These new protocols are saying it's under 65. Um, but it would be just good if a lot of young, younger people would step up, at least during this time, uh, if there's not ball games and things to go to, uh, and help us out. Call your uh, any of our parish uh, staff about that if you if you'll be willing to help usher because we're going to need at least five at every parish for every mass in order to kind of do this in an orderly fashion when people come in and like I said they're going to have to be ushered to a seat they won't be able just to go to wherever they want. Next question: Can we have a service in the parking lot? That is that is that is in the protocols. We cannot have. 
outdoor services, drive up communion, or anything like that. That's, uh, and I've heard some of the rationale, and it's not coming to my mind right now, um, but I think uh, in large part, we're, the bishop is really worried about uh, people who are vulnerable taking that chance, thinking they're safe in the car, but uh, getting out of their homes. Uh, he really wants the people that are vulnerable to stay home. I have another question. Uh, do they need to sign up for a specific mass time they would like to attend? Not at this point. Uh, at this point, the first week or two when we do open, or three, we're going to just see how many people are coming, uh, what kind of numbers we have, whether we're going to have to have people kind of choose a mass or that we would assign a mass alphabetically. But at the first, first couple weeks at least, we just got to see what's going to happen and how it happens. And I think here at least in St. Cecilia's, we will set up overflow in the parish center because we have a video system already set up. So I hopefully we'll be okay the first week or two. All right, we're seeing a lot of questions about uh, receiving communion. So once we get back into the swing of things uh, and people are coming for mass, will they be able to receive communion? Yes. Um, it's not the norm, but it's, it's going to feel really different because we're going to go through all of mass and... Um, so the priest and whoever is serving at the altar is going to receive communion at the normal time. We'll present the host as we always do, behold the Lamb of God. Uh, and we'll go all through closing prayer, final blessing, and then everyone that is there will be able to receive communion as they leave the church. So we will have just a single line in each of our churches coming up. Uh, bigger churches will split to two ministers of communion and then they'll have to leave by the side doors. And we have to kind of get the flow to all go in the same way so people aren't going past each other uh, as well. So we will be able to receive communion. The idea is you receive, you move six feet away from the minister of communion, lift up your mask, take, take the host, and then leave and kind of say your Thanksgiving prayers um, in the car or if you're walking home. So what if someone needs to go to confession? Well, we tried to make it known. If people need to go to confession, they can make an appointment with Father Sonny or myself, and then we meet uh, in a large room where we're socially distant. Um, and I'm here in Elgon. I'm going to try to do it outside if possible, because um, I think we're just hearing a lot of things. It's a lot safer outside. So try to find a place that's not too obvious um, and, and keep it private. With our new changes, will we still be able to have music ministry and music books in the pews? We will be able to have music ministry, but no books, no pamphlets, no bulletins. We still encourage you to get our parish app, look at the website. The bulletin is still being published. Uh, it can be emailed to you, um, but there's to be no papers, nothing that would be handled uh, in the pews. But we're allowed to have one music minister uh, accompanist of one cantor, but they really kind of encourage you not to do too much music because people have masks on and singing would, would kind of cast droplets out farther. And so we would, we would just be asking people to kind of sing under their mask in not a really powerful way, but uh, joining in the music in a more subtle, subtle way. All right. Will we have Mass at all four of our parishes at our normal scheduled times? That is our plan. That's a good question. I, in today's Zoom call with the other priests, there are some that are just going to do it at one church. I think we're better off to do it at each, as long as we have enough help, um, because I think in the small churches with one Mass, we could just close the church. And we really don't have to worry about, about the virus. It will die over the, if it is there, it will die over the coming week. Whereas here in Algona, we will have to um, sanitize after the 430 Mass and the 745. Will Mass still be available online for members who do not feel comfortable or are vulnerable, vulnerable to the COVID-19 virus? Yes, we will continue to uh, live stream the 430 Mass out of St. Cecilia's and it'll continue to be televised to St. Peter and Paul in West Bend uh, on Dynam Dynamic TV 
as well. Then, and both of those go on our, our sites after we, after we do it. So again, a reminder, like the live streaming uh, is on our Five Saints Catholic Community YouTube channel. And I don't think we reach it. We want to get to 1,000 subscribers so that we have more uh, versatility of using that YouTube channel. So good question. Just hope you continue to uh, subscribe and people subscribe to our YouTube channel. And here's an interesting question. Can we bring our own missalette or purchase one to bring? I'm, I'm pretty sure not. I, I have to ask that question, but I would guess they would say no. All right, well, I have a question. Father Sonny, how are you staying connected uh, to your prayer life during this COVID pandemic? Uh, well, connected to the prayer life, we just like celebrating Mass, so my morning prayer, uh, evening prayer, then uh, reading the Bible. Uh, so, so uh, much more, I have more time to spiritually connect with Jesus. And before we are involved more in the ministry, traveling around, so I have more of the time to uh, spend uh, uh, to meditation and uh, uh, especially reading of the scripture. Right. Father Ed, what about you? How are you staying connected to your faith during this time? On a similar, I think I actually um, at first had a lot more time. I mean, I'm, I'm having a fairly full work day, but it seems like I do have more time to pray uh, in the morning. So our mass schedule is much lighter, um, and then and the nice thing is, I have our seminary and Jake Rosemeyer with me, so we join together for morning and evening prayer, and then we each do our own kind of holy hours as well. And um, got a really nice book from Father Merle a few weeks ago called "I Thirst: Some Meditations Based on Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta," and that's been really helpful. It seems to kind of fit this time uh, really well, so. That's, that little book has really been a great gift that Father Murrow passed on, on to us. All right, Deacon Bill, how are you staying connected? Well, we, Mavis and I, are praying as much as we can together. We're trying to find that time um, as we both are fortunate enough to continue working and staying on our schedules. But again, there's always something to pray about and for, and especially now as we communicate with people on their concerns and their anxieties and their stress um, more each day, I've reached out and prayed for others as well. So that's keeping me connected as I stay connected to parishioners. All right, so we have another question. Would it be a good idea not to bring uh, like a purse or if you have kids, maybe the, the bag for the things that keep them entertained? Uh, and also how will we handle Offertory. Uh, I think it would be good not to bring extra things like for the kids either. Uh, if they get kind of out of hand and we don't, don't know what they've touched and where it's gone, because uh, we have to sanitize everything. Um, but um, what's the second part of the question? Offertory. Offertory. Oh, good. We're going to have um, large containers at the entrance of each of the churches for for the collection, it will not be taken up. So right as you come in, there's a place to put your envelope or your check, whatever you whatever you do. And we're gonna put it in a uh, like a stainless steel bowl or something like that where we can clean it up and not leaving any kind of uh, virus stuff on a basket. Um, and so I can re remind you that everyone's gonna come through the same entrance. Uh, we'll kind of point that out uh, in our protocol letter. All right, so this next question is for Deacon Bill. Uh, they would like to know when the last time you had a haircut was, Deacon Bill. <laughs> is this from my wife? It is not from your wife. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a wedding in first part of May, so it was uh, the end of April. And <laughs> uh, I'm ready to get another one. <laughs> Believe me. Everybody out there watching, feel free to comment if you think Bill needs a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Father, I think we covered this maybe earlier, but uh, we're getting a lot of questions about the Adoration Chapel again. Um, so any idea of when that will no idea that's the unfortunate thing with all of these things even opening up the church we have no idea when and uh, and I think the chapel is going to be after that and it may I think the bishop said it's staged in so we won't jump to 24-hour adoration and Algona it'll be 
maybe just staggered hours so that it can be sanitized in between. Um, it's just a real concern about um, making sure it's a safe place for whoever comes in. All right, the next question, uh, will funerals still be limited to family only and maybe we can comment on weddings and things like that also? Well, right now we're still under that uh, guideline of 10 people are under, um, even, if, even if you're related, we can't go beyond 10 um, for funerals. But if we open up the churches and have Sunday mass, then we'll be following the same protocol. So it would be every fourth pew people would be able to sit in. Um, so it will expand the numbers that are possible for funerals. But there would be all these limitations. No, there's no processions, uh, no gift fair, you know, gifts being brought up. And communion in that part would probably also come at the end, I would guess. All right, everyone watching, we still have some time. If you have any more questions, you can ask. I, I'd like to say something about, um, I know it gets frustrating to have the confinement. We're so used to doing what we want to do, when we want to do it. And I, like everybody else, miss my family. I miss my grandkids. Uh, but then I hear of different things of other dioceses having these outside masses, having communion in the car, drive by after mass or whatever, however they do it, having their churches open so you can go in to pray. But I think it's important that we know that um, here in the Sioux City Diocese, you know, we're committed to obedience to Bishop Nicholas. So we need to... Um, understand that we need to follow what what the guidelines that he sets out for us because he's he's leading us in the way that he feels that's best so and i i misspoke earlier on the haircut i didn't have a may wedding it was in march so it was the beginning of march that i had a, a haircut I thought, yeah, yeah I, not may it was march so father do we have any idea of an estimated number of how many people can attend a mass yeah, as we um, looked at it, it's pretty low. Like uh, St. Cecilia's, it was just the upper 50s, I think. Well, if we, if we put one person in each designated spot, it would be about 84 people, individuals. But families can sit together, couples can sit together. So that number should go up a bit here at St. Cecilia and in each place, depending. But if we went every individual, it would be 84 people. That's how many seats we would have. All right, so earlier you talked about uh, younger people getting involved. Uh, can high schoolers be ushers? I would say yes, yes. Uh, that'd be great. Uh, again, a lot of our high school people are so used to being so busy. This must be really hard on them as well. So this is a way to get involved and to have some commitments. Um, so I would encourage that. I'm sure a lot of young, young adults, young people are not listening to something like this tonight. So if parents, grandparents, please encourage uh, family members to uh, get involved. That would be very helpful. All right. So we're nearing 730. Do we have any final comments from any of our clergy? I'd like to finish. Father Sonny. Yeah. I think uh, we all really miss the church, and it's a very... Uh, important part of our uh, life and uh, uh, we attend as a family together but maybe it is maybe a great opportunity for us to pray together as a family and as children all sit together and uh, read a passage from the scripture and uh, 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 say a rosary um, and there are a lot of ways which we can be very close with Jesus through our prayer together as a family so let us uh, uh, encourage this time instead of uh, uh, keeping distance and all this we talk about but by coming together praying together we are becoming more connected to Jesus and our faith becomes more stronger when you return to church I'd like to thank everybody for coming this evening um, I'm hoping to do this again sometime soon and I just have to mention that the way this evening went um, if you don't know who's in charge, you do now.
<laughs> and I, I want to uh, say something about Bishop Nicholas. Um, Jake was joking with me about sending a question, how do, I, how do I think Bishop Nicholas is handling this situation, this pandemic? And I actually think he's done very well. He's been very strong. And some people may just have a lot of issues with all these limitations. But believe me, every time he talks, it's about protecting people. It's about saving their lives. Uh, that's a very Christian, very considered thing. It requires limits on our part, sacrifice on our part, for the sake of saving people. Um, he, he really, really has a tremendous concern as giving us really strong leadership. He also has a really good team um, that he's working with uh, to give us guidelines. All right, so Father, one final question. Sorry if I cut you off there. No, but, that's okay. Uh, probably be good to hear this again. All this stuff we talked about with reopening churches and the protocols, how is that going to be shared? We are going to send a, a letter to every household in all four of our parishes uh, giving the outline so that no one's left out because we know not everyone has social media. Um, again, as Deacon Bill said earlier, like in your own families, elderly or uh, people that aren't connected, uh, make sure to remind them they're going to get something in the mail and so they look for it, open it, and take a look at it. Unfortunately, it's probably going to be pretty long. we got an eight-page thing today. We'll try not to do that to you, um, but we are going to, it's probably going to be longer than we would wish, uh, so just take your, your time with it. But we will send it to every, every household. I want to thank you for coming uh, this evening, too. Um, Father Sonny and I can give everyone a blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God be upon you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.